Rennie, the fact of the matter is... <laughs> Um, it is back. England and not the Netherlands who have got to the final against Spain on Sunday. And sorry to rub it in, Rennie, but the Dutch fans were fabulous last night. Went back across the border, heads down, but they'll be back to fight again on another day. They, will, on be, they will be sadly missed, uh, yeah. Jim. I think uh, yeah. you saw the, you know, the orange wall and the, you know the walks through the streets and the, the music and everything. Holland is, as far as I know, they're, they're party people. They love it. They loved it. I mean, Simon, I have to say, we have to commend the, the fans last night. We were amongst them. They were magnificent, were they not? Yeah, great supporters. I think at international level, you tend to get less tribalism. You don't tend to get the aggravation that you get in domestic fixtures. We sat in amongst the Dutch. There's a couple of irritating Burks in front of us. Yeah. But most of the Dutch fans were brilliant. And they, you know, having a good chat with them about the game, they thought that England were the better side in the first half. And it was just... And the atmosphere that the Dutch created, I mean, very rarely do you go into a stadium when England are playing... And the dominant fans aren't the English in terms of the, the noise, and the Dutch were on a different level. Yep. So uh, I wonder how much the game hinged on that moment, that moment when England were awarded a penalty kick. The Netherlands boss, Ronald Koeman, criticised the use of VAR for breaking football after England were awarded a somewhat contentious penalty to draw themselves level. Harry Kane was caught on the follow-through by Denzel Dumfries after the England captain had already shot over the bar. So, penalty given after the referee ran over, had a look in the monitor, came back and pointed to the spot. The Dutch were up in arms. Uh, Post-match, Virgil van Dijk spoke to BN Sport and he was none too happy. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I don't know if I should say something about this, but... Um... I said it outside to our Dutch media. I think it says it all that the referee went in quite quickly after the game. Uh, had no time to shake his hand. Um, but listen, it is what it is. You know, I can't. The game is done. We lost, and it's very tough to take certain moments. You know, it was obvious that it should have gone our way. It didn't. Um, but they keep changing certain things, small changes that could have big impacts. But maybe it's a good thing that they could hold accountable as well. Let them come here and speak to you guys and uh, explain themselves in certain moments. Like we have to explain ourselves when we do something wrong as well. And I think that might be something. That was Virgil van Dijk. Rennie, um, uh, former England defender, ITV pundit Gary Neville felt the Netherlands had every right to feel aggrieved. He says, as a defender, I think it was an absolutely disgraceful decision. What was your take on it? I couldn't agree more. I said it, um, you know, straight away when eventually, you know, you saw the, the picture where the, the referee holds on his ear and he says he might have to go to the monitor. And I said to, you know, my friend was sitting next to me watching it. And I said, you watch this, this is going to be a penalty. And if you see the, obviously the slow motions and the replay, I mean, you know, Dumfries is just trying to, you know, put his foot in front to block the shot. And Harry Kane had a shot and hit his foot. It was... It was, in my opinion, not because I'm biased and I'm supporting Holland, but it was not a penalty, in my opinion, in a million years. And if it would have happened to England, I think they would have felt exactly the same. See, see that's the thing. And, and, and did, the, did the game hinge on that? On, yes. on that moment, did yes. the game hinge on Yes, although <clears throat> England controlled the game. I thought they were really good after that first goal of Holland. They took control of the game, the possession. They found the right players in the right positions. And they were opening us up. However, there was only the other ball that Dumfries kept from the line, where Foden, you know, wiggled through. And the shot from Foden on, on the outside of the crossbar. Other than that, it was England that was dominating. But apart from those two moments, not creating a lot. And if that would have gone 1-0 into half-time, I would imagine that Ronald Koeman, obviously the powers already came off with... Uh, Veerman coming on, so Roll strengthening that little bit of a side of the game. And I could not see England that sustaining for 90 minutes. So at some point, because where's Dutch the game based upon? On possession, keeping the ball, moving the opposition around. And when they had it, initially it was too slow, it was too pedestrian. But later in that game, that sort of changed. So if that would have goal would have not given, that penalty not given, it's still 1-0. Then obviously England becomes a bit more restless, you know, you know, when you can't break it down and we've seen a few. And then, yeah, at the end of the day, who knows what would happen? But it does change games. It changes games. But Simon, it's here to stay, as we've often said. VAR is a part of the game. IFAB keep on telling us it will settle down after a decade. It's I not, mean, it's nothing to do with VAR. It's to do with the referee. The referee made the decision. It's a bad refereeing decision. VAR is just an aid. It's what people do with it. 
So with that in mind, I mean, England have been on the receiving end. Yeah, of but some the referee pretty... didn't give that decision in real time. No, but the referee went over and looked at it and still made a decision that most people can't understand. And most, most defenders, most people looking at it as an Englishman, I want the penalty. Of course I do. And I think the, irrespective of that penalty, I think England would have got back into the game because I think they were the far better side. But the point is, is that when we keep on creating this myth about, you know, can I, can I just tell you this? I don't think so. And just on the basis of the performances of England in the previous games, if we would have held on, held out until half time, the second half would have probably had a different picture. Eventually, Holland would have sort of got a little bit more grip of the game, but you could see sort of the last 50 minutes of that second half. Because I do think, I think, how do you say that? I think that that penalty was so important for the belief and the self-confidence for England and then the second half to say, OK, let's keep going, but, let's keep going. But the second half performance that we put out because the Dutch adjusted was far less compelling than the first and the momentum was building. And you're probably right, Rene, that ultimately the, the penalty was a key component of England building from it. But they but they were so dominant, they were so better than the Dutch for a period of the time. Yeah, but they were also dominant against Serbia. The first half was brilliant. Yeah. Where but, were they in the second half? Yeah, but they got beat up in the second half against the Serbians. In the second half, the Dutch adjusted technically and England didn't. Yeah, but that's what I'm seeing. Holland would have looked at that and said, listen, England will have parts in the game where yeah, we can really uh, I mean, if, you go know, for it. If Declan Rice defends better and Kyle Walker comes out and shuts the ball down and, and, and the goalkeeper does better with the, with, the, with, the, with the shot, we can all turn around and say what could have happened. The fact is, we got a penalty in a game. England have been, the, on the reci have been the recipients of some pretty shocking decisions in international football, whether it be the 86 situation with Maradona, with the 2010 situation with Frank Lampard against the Germans. I think we can accept the fact that we're due one, and we got one. Well, congratulations, you got one. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame it's against us. <laughs> well said, Renny. Well said. But you're right, Simon. That he goes to the monitor, he looks at it, points to the spot, penalty given, and the rest is history. England are in that final. Um, uh, Renny Mullenstein is with us all the way through until 1 o'clock, back home your time, 2 o'clock hours, then we're off to Berlin. Uh, we're we're going to look closely, obviously, at uh, who they meet in the final. They, they meet Spain. We're going to look at this wonder kid who's 17 on Saturday, 17 years of age. Uh, he has been outstanding, of course. Uh, we, we shall look at him, that and a whole lot more. And we'll touch on what's been going on on back home as well with uh, Amanda Staveley exiting stage left at St. James's Park. Stay with us. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.